to the next part here, we're going to find several different kinds of attacks here in this data. So what you did the first time was find a vulnerability scan and a, uh, a download that went backwards against traffic and got a defacement file name. So now we're going to find um, All right, we found, wait, I'm down too far. Here we are, all right. So now we're gonna find the staging server domain name and its IP address. And we're gonna do some threat intelligence outside Splunk, which is also part of it. So here, this is these nine events that went backwards. And we went down here and found the request that loaded the defacement file name. Okay. And that went to this prankglassingbracket.jumpingcrab.com website. So that's the, uh, the staging server domain name. Now we want that server's IP address. And this is a request to that site. So all we need is the destination IP here. So that's the IP address where they went to get that uh, malicious file. And that they call a staging server. The bad guys will compromise a server and they use it to host malware, which they then download onto sites they attack. So now we want to find other domains on that server. So the simplest thing to do is just go to Google and search for the IP address. If it's a known IP address that bad guys are using, it will have a bad reputation and people like Alien Vault and Threat Miner will just tell you what has been, it has been found to be doing and so here is, it's an Amazon server. And here's um, things that have been there. Wayne Core Inc. Wayne Corp, which is another Batman themed thing. So that was probably part of it. And if you go down here, here's other URLs. So none of these, oh, here it is, right there it is. PoisonIvy.com. That was the uh, LeetSpeak domain name that they wanted you to find. It's spelled, LeetSpeak is where you take letters and replace them with numbers. So. And the question here was to find the other domain names on the same server. Because people typically do this. They keep changing the domain name. And there's a lot of threat intelligent companies that find this information and just put it out there. Uh, this one didn't have it. Uh, Robtex is a good one. And uh, hybrid analysis might be good too. That's why you, you, you get used to knowing five or ten of these. Here's an IP analysis. Looks like I'm not getting too much out of that one. Wait, here we are. Yep, here's, we investigated eight host no names that go there. And here's free automated techniques. Contact server. You can learn a lot here. And this is going to have a lot to do with the attack matrix stuff we're going to talk about later. Um, this is threat intelligence. People record information about the attacks from the bad guys. And that's how you attribute it to a group and how you figure out who they are and why they're attacking you, which is increasingly what people want to do these days. Anyway, then the next thing is we're going to find the brute force attack, which is another bad thing they did, not directly connected to the previous ones. They brute forced an administrative password to get control of our server. So we're going to find the events, HTTP events using POST. So if let's start with an HTTP search. I'll turn on the event sampling again. And I don't care where it came from for right now. I just want all the HTTP requests. OK, now I've got some of them. Now there is an HTTP method down here. There. This is the request. This is either get or post. So I click post to see only the post methods. And my tips said find the 15,570 such events. So I see 152 because I'm only looking at 1% of them. So if I stop sampling, then I should find 15,570. Yep. All right, there we are, 15,570. So I'm on the track. All right, then I want to exclude the events from the vulnerability scanner and look at the form data. 
Now the vulnerability scanner, you just can remove it by using not. And then put in the name of it, which was Acunetics. That's, it turns red to warn you that's a keyword. This is just what you do in like an advanced search engine. Just not, I want an event that doesn't have that word anywhere in the event. And that should get me down to 441 events. Okay, and now what I used to do was I would just find the, um, I want to find the form data. And one way to get the form data is to just click this and it will show you like the top 10. And then you can uh, view top values and view it elsewhere. But the cool way we just got working today because of a student question is use pipe table. I think I'm going to do that. Form data is the name of this field. Let's try this. This I think is more professional than the old fashioned way I used to do it. We do pipe table form data. And now I see all the form data values. So these show the data it was sending. These are like search things with start and init. But if you go down a bit, now you see username is admin, username is admin, password is Batman. And here's username is admin. Password is rock. Password is Sammy. Password is cool. This is a brute force attack. And we'd like to know a little bit more about these events. So let's see what we're looking for here. We want to know the IP address performing this brute force attack. So uh, we could examine just one of these events or we could just put in more stuff. Let's put CIP here. That should do it. That's the client IP. And so down here, this is the brute force attack. And over here should be the client IP. So I guess that's the client IP performing it. That's one way to find it. And now, um, all right, that's how we find the IP address performing the attack. And now we want to find the name of the executable they uploaded to the server. See what they did was they did the brute force attack until they found the right password. Then they logged in as administrator and now they had the ability to upload an executable file and run it on the server. And so we can just find these 15,570, exclude the phone scanner, and now look for exe files. So for that, we'll go up here, quit looking at just those two fields and start with this. This should give me the 15,570 again. Oops, the 441. Is that what I wanted? I think I wanted the 15,570. Uh, let me find out what I'm doing here. Using the post method. Okay, I did that. Okay, now look for Windy exe. That's fine. Now look for exe. So I think dot exe is probably enough. Let's see what that does. The dot might be a special character. That would be annoying. But I found two events with dot exe in them. And now I can just look at them and see. In fact, I can use the search engine in my browser, might be the easiest way to do it, for .exe. Yep, there's only five occurrences of that. So there's one. Okay, there's a file with a file name ending in .exe. And there it is again. And there it is again. Yep, that's it. So that's an easy way to find it. You can find the name of the file that was downloaded and run to compromise the server. And there's one other thing. I think that comes down here. Yeah, let's talk a bit more about this brute force stuff. You could, By the way, you can find the MD5 hash of that by just hunting around. And I just want to see, let's take another look at that brute force password used. Um, if we go back to the brute force attack here, where we looked at the form data, that was the not acunetics that included the brute force attack, but it also included some other things. So if I go here and I look at the um, form data, if I just click it here, it will show me some of the values in the form data. These are other 
post events that did not participate in the brute force attack. None of these, in fact, are the brute force attack. So I'm going to go to rare values. See, these are things that happened many times. And in the brute force attack, it never repeated the same thing twice. So if you click rare values, it will show you a geographic map, which is silly. But on the statistics tab, it will show you a summary of these. This is another way to see just the form data to click rare values. And if you get down here, here's the brute force attack. Username equals admin and uh, password equals flower, password equals ZZZ. So I want just these events without those extras. And I can just put in phrases that came from it. And I think actually this might be good and password equals. Let's see if that works. That's a That looks like a string that appears only in the bad ones. So I want to look at this. Uh, I don't need all this garbage. I think I just want that string there. And I think maybe I better put quotes around it because it's got an equal sign in it and it might confuse it otherwise. Let's see what that does. Okay, now I have 413 events. And if I look at the form data, I want to see if I'm getting just the right events or not. And see, now these look pretty good. Username equals admin. They all look exactly the same. The only thing that's changing is the password on every event. And now I think I can answer questions. See, the question is, when did the brute force attack begin? And how long did it go? And things like that. And I think I can answer that now from this. Now, the way Splunk handles time, it always shows you the most recent event first. So you see this one is at 248.05. And the next one is at 248651. So if I, for example, switch this to, I think, table, it'll be even easier to see. There, here we go. So here I have 24805, and then two minutes earlier, I have 24651, and this one is only every one tenth of a second. So here you can see the pattern. A whole bunch of requests are coming in, many requests per second, 0.6, 0.8, 51.1, 51.15, this is the automated attack trying many, many passwords. And it, so the, here's 246.51. If I go to the very beginning of it, I'd have to go to the last page. There's several pages. Although, yeah, 50 per page is the most I have. So I'm going to go to the last page to get when this attack started. And at the bottom, okay, the attack started at 245.21. And then it continued trying multiple requests per second, as you can see. It's only like a tenth of a second between these requests. So it started at 245.21. And the automated attack ended at 246.51. So it took about two minutes scanning 440 guesses. And then there was a pause. And another login came in here. And this one came from a different source, I think. So what happened is the attacker ran an automated scan which found the right password. And then they manually logged in with that password in a real browser. So if you look at the um, user agent of this stuff, which ought to be someplace over here, uh, may not find it there, but let's go back to um, here, user agent. You can tell these apart. Yeah, here we are. See, a whole bunch of them, 412 of them are Python. That's the automated script attacking. And this one is a real browser, Mozilla. So the attacker ran a script until it found the right password. Then they logged in in a browser. And so you can see the start and end of the script. And you can see what the correct password was, by which one they actually used in this request, and so on. So you can answer a lot of questions about the uh, brute force attack this way. All right. Yeah, that's what I'm